Yes, my name is Chris Rogers, and we're talking ransomware resilience with Otto, and this is the isolate and lock. So the idea of the, the Zerto Cyber Resilience Vault, or Z-Vault, as for short as a slang term, as, as Justin's called it, um, is, to, is to give uh, organizations that, that isolated recovery environment or the vault or clean room, however you, however you want uh, to organize that. Um, and it's becoming very obvious, you know, the, the question is there, regulation is becoming you know, harder and harder to get around and harder and harder to, to ignore um, or, 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 or kind of figure out ways we can, you know, deviate from that. So. It's, it's, it's been increasingly mandated that you know isolated recovery environments are kind of the de facto or the or the last line of your defense right the emergency recovery option that you're going to need um and it's been brutally aware that you know ransomware is actually going after data protection solutions right it knows that you know i'm sure everyone's seen you know different vulnerabilities come into different products and you know that, that happens and if you don't patch them you know, you would have a vulnerability in a data protection product that's supposed to be providing protection from something is actually allowing the way in. But if they're looking to to harm you in the most the hardest way they can, they can be going after your data protection solution. So we need to protect our data protection solution, which sounds absolutely bonkers, but it, we need to do that. We need to make sure it's actually going to be available and ready for us to recover from if the worst were to happen. So if we go back to our anatomy of an attack, right? So initial access, C2 lateral movement we've understand the encryption and everything else but if we look at this lateral movement piece what happens here if the worst were to happen i think there was a comment earlier you know what if we lost the whole site right well yeah that's going to be devastating to an organization not just one app or one vm or one set of files if you lose a whole site it's going to be pretty devastating right but what happens if the ransomware has spread widely and it is across your whole network well here we're going to introduce you zerto cyber resilience vault so it's your data fully isolated, fully air-gapped, fully mutable, and based on zero trust in principles as well. So what does it look like, right? So again, if you've ever seen Zerto, you will see these diagrams, and unfortunately, that they come up again. Zerto Virtual Manager left-hand side, VRA left-hand side, as we've discussed already. Then our replication target, so you notice I've used replication target and not DR site, because it could be a DR site, it could be a, a, another replication target that's co-located with production. It doesn't hasn't have to be physically a, a different site. It can be wherever you want it to be. So we're doing replication between there. And you see in our replication target, what Justin was mentioning earlier, that we've actually bundled some cool stuff with it, right? So inside the vault, you'll get, well, sorry, inside the replication target, you'll be provided with HP Pro line for your compute and HP Electra for your storage underneath. And you can see we're doing the, the CDP across there, the encrypted continuous replication. And again, we're adding that inline encryption, detection, and alerting that we've discussed at length a minute ago. So that's our replication target. Now, if we look at our vault. So the vault exists co-located wherever the replication target is. That is mandated, that has to happen. And the reason that has to happen is the only link we have here is a direct physical air gap, but the only link we have is between those two cables, between two storage arrays. They're not going up to being routed. They're not public. They're just literally, you know, cross cross cab connected between two storage arrays. But that connection is off by default. So but by standard, those HP Electras do not have a connection between them. And then inside of the vault, when we're doing the replication, so we're doing encrypted periodic replication between the Electras, we're taking mutable snapshots of everything that's stored on the Electra and putting it into our vault. That includes all of Zerto, all the journals, all the, the VMs that, to run Zerto, and everything else there. So including things like the VC as well. Right. So all the components you need to run Zerto are on those immutable snaps and those, those LUNs and those data copies you have stored in your vault. And then we have a resilience automation server that sits inside the vault. So that manages the um, port access. And actually, the, the replication between the Electras is on a randomized port each time as well. So it's not just opening and closing the same port. So if you manage to like manage to get hold of it or watch it, whatever, you're able to intercept that. Each time it's on a randomized port as well. And then you'll notice inside of the vault, we have HP Aruba networking for our networking outwards, HP Pro Lion for our compute, and HP Electra. So we're trying to mirror what we have in a replication target inside of our vault. But when we come to, to doing that, we have all of the bits we need inside of our vault. And the idea of the vault is that it has no network connectivity outside of the um, 
the RCIP connection between the two electrodes. So as by default, if you want to go and have a look at it, you've got to walk to your data center, open up a crash cart and have a look at it, right? That That's the way we're doing this because as soon as you open up a management port, so someone in in the UK like me can start looking inside of it and go, oh, let me just tinker around, tinker around. That opens up a vulnerability. And it, and we have we don't want that vulnerability in our side of vault. This is the lockdown, you know, securest place we have our data to make sure we can't move, move away from it. And then we have the same vault, but it's also available, not just for production workloads using vCenter to vCenter like we have here, but also from cloud targets, so from, sorry, from cloud source. So from uh, AWS or Azure or Uma Cloud on wherever you want to run it, um, that can replicate into the replication target using the same CDP that we, we always have stored on the electros and then copied across into our vault, right? So it's not just a one trick pony with, you know, just production vCenter VMs. Those, those cloud IaaS instances can be protected as well in exactly the same manner. So the, the, you know, the data flow is exactly the same inside the VRA stored on the Electra, copied across into the vault. And <clears throat> also integrate with the HP backup and recovery service. You see more and more green on the slides as we go, <laughs> as we build up. So if you're using the HP backup and recovery service for those, you know, maybe those VMs that aren't as critical, um, you know, you don't what you don't need, you know, those sub 10 second RPOs on, or maybe maybe you want to have backup as well for a different reason. We can integrate into the GreenLake backup and recovery service. Again, store that data on the Electra array, move that across to our vault. And we're storing that data inside of our vault. So we're, we're kind of flexible in the, the way that we deploy this and the, the use cases as, as well. When we go to bundling, so we're, we're doing four fixed size bundles. And these are not flexible. These are not, uh, these are not customizable purely for, for simplicity, but also for the fact we've validated all the hardware, we've validated the bundles and everything else like that. So there comes an extra small, small, medium, and large. So inside of the bundle, you'll receive Zerto software, HP Electro arrays. HP Pro Line for your compute, HP Aruba for your networking, and also HP Professional Services to install as well. So as a customer, you can buy this off the shelf. You just say, hey, I want a small small one here, no problem, here we, away we go, job done, right? You don't have to worry about trying to size this or trying to figure out um, you know, all the different pieces. And we've, <laughs> I don't know if I can say this or not, but I'm going to say anyway, We've achieved massive discounts on by bundling all of this stuff together. So if you were going to go and try and shop this stuff yourself and do a DIY, you would never be able to get it for the package price we'd be able to give you it for straight from Zerto. So it's kind of what I want to kind of go and go, why did we bother doing this, right? There's already vaults out there. People can use vaults already. There's already ones in the marketplace that, that are being sold. So why did we get into this? Well, we we actually went out and spoke to customers who have existing cyber vaults um, from leading leading manufacturers out there. When we looked at their experience and we, we kind of look at the, the numbers down the left hand side, when we looked at that, we said that we can do this better. We can do this faster, cheaper, better, stronger, whatever you name it. We can do vaulting better than how it's done today. So if you look at what is the leading backup cyber, cyber vault on the market at the moment, last good copy is between 32 and 56 hours. Once that backup's been taken, stored on disk, which is normally slow secondary disk, right? Once it's done and then the scanning's completed, that's our last good copy. Maybe a little bit less, maybe maybe you could go down to 24 hours on that, but it's still going to be a long, long time. If we look at the time to restore back from slow disk, restoring large amounts of data, 16 to 18 days is what, what customers told us in that environment. Again, even if you want to take that down to half that to a week, right, that's still a long, old time to, to be down um, and getting that production, waiting for your production to come back up. And if we look at that, the total ransomware impact here, 20 plus days. Again, even if you halve that down to 10 days again or 11 days, it's still a huge amount of impact for an organization to, to go. And they're not using journal-based recovery. Right? They're using backups. They're using the ones that have been there for maybe days or maybe even weeks. Who knows, right? And then when we look at Zerta, what we're achieving with the, the, the site resilience vault, the last good copy is going to be four hours old. Time to restore is going to be less than two hours. So a total ransomware impact here is going to be you know six hours. And we are using journal-based recovery for our uh, for recovering inside of the vault. So we're not just using snaps and then bringing up the VMs from snaps, right? We're actually restoring the whole of Zerto back in the vault and using Zerto to recover the virtual machines and infrastructure. So what is the resilient vault? So what, what does it mean? So we're combining that isolated recovery environment or a clean room with a lockdown data vault. So normally you choose a clean room which has you know, production grade infrastructure, and production grade networking and everything else, right? So you can run workloads on. 
that's your clean room. And then you'd have a vault which has tons of disk and stores your backups on. And then you would have to try and recover one into the other, right? Or you have a copy of that vault inside your clean room and that's how it communicates. What we're doing here is we're combining the two together. So your vault and your clean room are in the same place. They are the same set of hardware. So when we're doing that recovery, or you're doing your testing even to see if it's up, it's coming up on production grade storage and compute with production grade networking behind it. Not having to build them on appliances and then migrate them across to a production system. All the data is always in immutable format inside the vault. So um, someone mentioned earlier, you know, should we trigger an immutable copy? Well, if you're using the vault, you don't need to trigger anything. We always have an immutable copy in the vault for you. And it is, you know, always air gapped. It's on secure, high performance hardware. As I said before, there is no centralized control plane. So there, if in other vendors in the market, there are cloud-based, so there is still vulnerability having vaults in the cloud because you have to be able to access it somehow. Or they have a, a firewall that's ma managing that, that management in and out of the vault. In the worst cyber attack where everything is gone and you're needing your vault, and you're hoping that one firewall doesn't get impacted <laughs> to, to manage that, manage that. It's a little bit of a hope strategy if you ask me. You know, you're hoping that one firewall withstands the attack that all your other infrastructure hasn't managed to. And then it's going to help our customers meet those compliance and regulatory requirements that, that they need to. So we've got replicate and detect, we've got isolate and lock. 